Welcome to The Rich Report, a podcast with news and information on the world of big data. Today, my guest is from Clustrix. We have Robin Perohit. He is the CEO and president of the company. So, Robin, welcome to the show today. Uh, glad to be here, Rich. Well, well, thanks for coming on. You know, Robin, I, what I thought we'd do is go through your slides and then do a Q&A at the end. Does sound good? You bet. Yeah. Uh, well, let me just kick off by saying, that, you know, personally, I think it's an extremely exciting time in the database industry with so many changes going on. And so what I want to share today is our view, what's happening. And, and you know, what Clusterx focuses on specifically is we have a, a scale-out SQL database that's available, software available in public and private cloud. And so our point of view is, is influenced, of course, by what, what we build. So let's go to the, the first slide here. So our, our point of view is that the scale-out database revolution is inevitable and it's the right approach for these new kinds of applications built on the cloud. All these scale-out databases, whether it be the NoSQL family, the Hadoop family, or what you now hear about in NewSQL, have some common attributes. They're horizontally scalable, a lot of automation to take advantage of elasticity in the cloud, and but have very different programming model and very different uh, performance attributes. Um, so we see customers using them together to solve their, their problems. Now, um, 80% of the problem, I'd say, that these technologies solve could be solved with the traditional scale-up technologies, but the, the order of magnitude of money that you have to spend on hardware and traditional license costs just puts it out of reach of what we think the market's going to evolve to. So let's talk a little bit more about where we see the new kinds of applications driving this demand on the next slide. Um, so you know, what we're seeing right now is that, boy, it's so easy to create an application, whether you're a big company or a small company, that can go from inspiration of a cool idea to you know, a client base that drives billions of transactions interacting with billions of rows of data. You can literally do this in months using cloud technology, whether it's on-premise or in a public cloud. And you can do this with pay-as-you-go modular building blocks. And that's the really exciting thing about where we are today. Um, the challenge most people deal with is as soon as they kind of create this user base or an application that has this high volume of data that's changing quickly, is it's pretty darn important to their business. So they're trying to figure out how to monetize that data in more interesting ways. So the application gets smarter and smarter, tries to figure out how to use the data that they're capturing to, uh, to monetize the data in new ways. And then the business people get more and more interested in what you build. And so there's all sorts of ad hoc querying that starts to happen on top of that live data and increasing use of an online reporting tools to get some you know, insight in the order of seconds of the information that you're capturing. So all of this means that there's new kinds of pressures and new kinds of solutions required for that operational database that you're running your business on day by day. So our viewpoint of the new world of the operational database is that it's super important, of course, to be built in a scale -out architecture uh, with all those fun attributes. Um, it's also super important that you can really trust the data. Uh, this is your most valuable data, so fully acid, you know, a, a programming model that is easy to use with SQL, and most importantly, that we see customers wanting to drive massive transaction volume, both reads and writes, at the same time as increasingly sophisticated questions um, that we'd call real-time analytics. So you know, ad hoc queries or smart applications that are doing joins across many, many tables with seconds or sub-second response time without having to move that data somewhere else. So that's how we see the new problem to be solved in the operational database world. So we've been in the market for a couple of years. So you know, we've seen customers tackle this problem in a variety of segments and been helping them. And particularly, we see e-commerce, this consumer web segment, where it's easy to reach a lot of people very quickly, and advertising analytics being scenarios in which a lot of read-write traffic together with a lot of um, demand for insight into that operational data combined in the same database. And I'll give you a couple of examples of things that we've learned as you've worked with these customers. You know, the, the most important thing we've learned and we've proved is that you know, there's a myth out there in the industry that in order to get skill, to reach all these customers and build a great application, you gotta abandon SQL. And it's just not true. 
Uh, we've we've shown in um, significant online dating site. I think it's now the largest in Western Europe, run by Massa Media called True.com. We've helped them grow to now over 20 million users, uh, driving a high volume of user traffic. It actually peaks now at 100,000 transactions per second day by day, all on one single SQL database that's been built on our technology with kind of this scale-out approach. So it looks to the application like one SQL database, and as they've expanded their user base, they just get adding more building blocks, and we're continuing to be able to grow with great performance uh, without even having to shard their application. So what it meant to them is they're able to keep focusing on growing their customer base without having to worry about the database keeping up. Um, and then the second example I'll give you is that a lot of demand for is real-time analytics, particularly in the, in the ad analytics space or ad tech space. So I'm showing here is a benchmark to be published um, on AWS, our software is available on AWS, that shows you can speed up queries linearly as you add more nodes. And we haven't seen a theoretical limit. We just ran out of money at 32 nodes in our benchmark. And then Gage BDR, one of our customers, actually saw this in their evaluation and, and decided to bet their business on us. What they saw is immediate speed up of their queries that were running pretty slow on their MySQL environment, um, their user-driven queries from several hours down to a few seconds. So dramatic, immediate benefit. And what's cool about both of these customers is that they really showed us that um, mixed workloads are super important. So Engage BDR, while they have you know, business analysts trying to figure out how to drive you know, better monetization out of their advertising algorithm and ad brokerage, they're also placing billions of ads a day uh, with sub-millisecond uh, response time. So they have to do both on that same data to run their business. And mass media, similarly, you know, tens of millions of users now interacting with their application that need very good response time. But you know, behind the scenes, they have these amazing algorithms that try to figure out how to connect people together on their dating site so their site becomes more valuable. And those questions are very analytic in nature. So you've seen virtually every customer as they get to scale that they need to have both a high concurrency OLTP and uh, ad hoc queries and OLAP reporting on the same data at the same time. And the good news is they've been able to do it with a scalable SQL solution. Now, if you go to the next slide, if you, if you don't believe us, if you think that it's just us that's cracked the problem, you should believe Google. There's a great uh, article that was published just last week, I believe, in the register that describes the F1 database solution based on a spanner white paper published by Google last, last year for their AdWords platform. And you know the scale that they're doing on a single SQL database is shown here. It's pretty significant. And you know, they have a point of view that this is the right way to solve this problem, both high concurrency you know, ad serving as well as complex queries on the same data. Now, most people don't have the access to the uh, army of very talented, expensive engineers that Google does. So folks like us and Clusterx are Trying to, provide a, trying to provide an out-of-the-box technology solution to that problem. And the good news is those are available now. So question is, so uh, how do you choose the right tool for the right job? Lots of problems we solve in the big data space. We just want to share a few thoughts on how to think about the problem. You know, so th let's think about it from a real application perspective. So an e-commerce example, we have many customers there. What we see is that you know, the, the questions that they're trying to ask the database in their application are about connecting customers to reviews of products to orders to the product itself right so this is the typically what the application is trying to do now the interesting thing is those questions get uh, more sophisticated as the client base grows and the pro and the number of products they present grows um, and so the, it's really important that they have an easy way of connecting the dots so they can monetize uh, the data in their application the other interesting thing is most of these things are pretty well known or pretty structured. So you kind of know what you want to know about your customers and the reviews and the orders. The one exception to that is really the product side. You know, what the product information you want to put in the database for a golf club is very different than uh, for a TV. And so that's where a lot of the NoSQL technologies are being used, particularly document store databases, to have the information on product catalogs that are displayed on the e-commerce site. But the real money comes in connecting all these things together, which is fundamentally a relational problem, which is why we see so many e-commerce clients still try to find a way to scale their SQL engine behind their site. Second thing that we, we think through is, well, 
how simply do you want to have the questions answered? And you know, nobody has a lot of time when they're building these hyperscale applications. And so it's important that people understand how many, how are they going to write their, their code to answer these questions. So what we're showing here is a simple contrast between uh, you know, relational interpretation of what we just saw in e-commerce application, very simple, powerful uh, SQL statements versus what you would use in uh, a MapReduce implemented here within Mongo. And there's a big difference in the number of lines of code, but also the level of detail code you have to write, uh, SQL statements versus C code. So it really depends on the increasing power of the questions you want to answer and how much time you want to spend writing detailed code versus simple code. Uh, so that's a, a big question we see our customers struggling with. And the third thing that we, we uh, see people struggling with is, well, what, how quickly do you need the questions answered? And quite simply, you know, the, the more complex the query, the more time it's going to take, and probably the more data you want to integrate. So, look, if you're really looking at um, very deep, complex questions, you're going to expect the response of these questions in minutes, hours, maybe even the next day. And that's where batch analytic systems are, are really useful. You can integrate data sources from many, many places, and increasingly with Hadoop. Um, unstructured and structured data sources to get some some new insights, but you're not going to get it in seconds. And so, if you're a business analyst trying to figure out how your customers are behaving in real time and how you maybe want to make some uh, rapid changes, you really want the responses to those questions in seconds. And um, that's where our approach is to try to do that in the same database. So you don't have to move the data around, and you can provide that millisecond response time in transactions at the same times as as those fast responses to complex questions. What we're seeing in the industry is that people are struggling with doing those real-time analytics on the unstructured repositories like NoSQL databases. They really weren't initially geared for doing uh, complex analytics. Um, and so people are layering on stream analytics and memory analytics on top of those solutions to try to find a way to put another database side by side with it to solve those problems. So you have a choice of going with a consolidated solution to solve what 80% of the questions are, um, or have stringing together multiple databases um, with in-memory and NoSQL. But we always think that the most complex questions and things where you can wait for minutes, hours, or days are, is best done in these uh, warehousing analytic solutions increasingly with Hadoop, or if you want the sophistication and the power of, of SQL, learning SQL on top of Hadoop with the various solutions out there or using something like a, a columnar database, like a Vertica or Redshift. The last thing I'll just share before we get into some Q&A is, you know, it's, it's really important you think through about the, what's the size of data and how much flexibility you need in the structure of the data and how you ask the question. So, you know, at a simple level, if you're, if you're thinking about a petabyte size problem where you have no idea what kind of data you want to integrate for these big complex questions, and you're willing to write a lot of very custom code that, that uh, uses simple lookup statements, but all the complexity of the algorithm is in your application, Hadoop is a great solution for you. And it's probably the only solution for you out there that's cost effective right now. Um, on the other extreme is the new SQL solutions that we focus on and others. With distributed architectures, you can now get to tens of terabytes of data pretty cost effectively, even with flash storage, which is very high performance. Um, and these new databases, you know, while they focus on structured data, they let you change the schemas online so that as your business grows and your needs change, you can change the structure of the database. And so the advantage is you can get 80% you know, of the people have a problem that is in the tens of terabytes range. Um, and if they can change their schema, then they, get, they have the flexibility to really adopt most of their operational database as their needs grow. And they get all that power of complex analytics and joins with a very simple application or query framework. And so that's how you need to think about the problem. What are you really trying to get in terms of size, flexibility, and how much work do you want to put into writing the queries? Okay, so where do we think it's all going? We know the operational database is, you know, the new world order is going to be, we think, always going to be a combination of NoSQL and NewSQL working together. Increasingly, NewSQL will be used for the stuff that really matters to the, uh, the, the business operations of customers and where you want to run analytics in real time on that operational data. 
Um, and then in batch analysis, you know, Hadoop and together with columnar scale-out databases, we think will coexist for, for uh, a lot of time. Vertica has shown that you can get a lot of power of columnar read-only databases. Uh, Hadoop has shown that it's it's best way to integrate multiple data sources, data types together to really mine for new kinds of insights. So we think this is the new world order and that uh, it will replace over time scale-up solutions, the traditional scale-up solutions, even in the mainstream data centers, although initially it will be on these kind of more innovative application segments that we shared with you today. So I'll close off there and then just on the last slide, you know, if you're interested in learning more about what we do and the deep technology, you know, there's a great link here to our, our tech page on docs.clustrix.com. Well, great. Well, thanks for that, Robin. You know, I'm, I'm curious about when, when you first talk to customers, your initial uh, discussions, wh what's the big pain point that they're trying to make go away? Is it about scaling or what would you say? Yeah, there's, there's usually two things. Oftentimes we talk to a customer who's um, really struggling with scale because you know, they've had that great idea. They've started up with some you know, open source stuff in a public cloud environment, and now they're successful. <laughs> so now they're dealing with all the typical problems of availability and unpredictable workloads kind of hitting their database and, and causing all sorts of performance problems. And more importantly, they're seeing their, their business start to grow or their user base growing, so they know they're going to continue to have a bigger and bigger problem. So that's the most common thing that we see in this kind of innovative new cloud application world. And, uh, you know, with, with the cloud, of course, interoperability is everything, right? You have to work with a lot of different sets of technologies. Is that a forte of the Clustrix solution? Yeah, absolutely. We try to make it as easy as possible to use our technology um, and migrate from an, a scale-up SQL solution. So, you know, most people are very familiar and comfortable with scale-up SQL. So, they'll they'll start with a traditional database or an open source database like MySQL or Postgres. So, we've converted all those solutions in a pretty, pretty straightforward way to our distributed database solution. All it takes a little bit of tweaking because as you know, you work in a distributed database. Uh, some things work differently because of the way you distribute data in the queries, but that's a minor amount of work, and we have the people to help you do all of that. Um, we have built in a lot of technology to be pretty near wire compatible with MySQL in particular, so if you're familiar with that, it's a pretty straightforward transition. Yeah, yeah. Well, kind of a wrap-up question here, Robin. Uh, how easy is it to uh, kick the tires on Clustrix and see if it's right for me? Yeah, it's dead easy. We have our software available on Amazon Marketplace. You can go directly there and um, and just spin up some licenses. It's easy to install. It takes a couple of minutes with the self-guided wizard. And you can use, you know, three-node cluster all the way up to unlimited number of nodes on just about any uh, EC2 configuration you want. If you want a little bit more help, you can contact us directly, and we'll, we'll provide a software image to run uh, directly on, on uh, the Amazon Cloud. And just in a few weeks' time, we're going to make our software available as a public uh, download off our website. So you can run on any hardware platform that you want. Well, terrific. Well, Robin, I want to thank you once again for uh, coming on the show today. Great. It's glad to be here. You bet. You bet. Okay, folks, that's it for the Rich Report. Stay tuned for more news and information on the world of big data. <laughs>